Hi, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, the World Rules Pool Tour, Blackpool. And uh, what a great match we've got lined up for you this morning. Carl Morris, who needs no introduction, versus Jake McCartney, who is uh, over here. And uh, he's been doing uh, really well recently had some good wins and uh, is in form so uh, this uh, should be a great match oh they're sat the wrong sides tell them they have to change sides George they're sat the wrong sides just hearing that uh, Jake sat in the wrong seat for this match, so uh, one of our adjudicators is going to go out now and uh, sort that out. Just let them know they need to change sides. There we go. Carl Morris will just uh, take his keys and bits and bobs and uh, go over to the next seat. There we go. So, Carl Morris to break off. You can see on the right. A great camera angle. That is to show you the break. Oh dear. I won't be happy with that. He was winding up for quite some time and uh, unfortunately he's gone in off. First frame is always uh, massive in these uh, short races to seven. Always want to get off to a good start if you possibly can. Yellows look to be the better option for Jake. And of course, whenever you've got ball in hand, you can uh, move the white behind the line to an optimal position. And it looks like Jake's played a good shot. He's followed through enough, I believe. Yep. So he can get to work on uh, a couple of his awkward yellows on this left-hand side. Certainly the yellow furthest to your left, I think, passes, which is the, the yellow Jake is playing now. Nicely done. And from here, he should have a pretty comfortable finish. Just needs to keep good control of the white ball. Yeah, he's electing to play this one on the bottom rail now. Just needs to top this in, concentrate on the pot. It was always naturally white was drifting up the table, so uh, nicely done again there from Jake. Just uh, taking his time, making sure that uh, he does everything right on this first frame. Nothing better, nothing better to 
get any nerves that you've got out of your system if you can get the first frame on the board always feel always makes you feel a lot more comfortable Jake has uh, been putting in a lot of practice I think he's uh, based now at the players pool lounge in Stoke now he practices quite hard with uh, some of the top players over there Declan Brennan also spends a bit of time there prior to events I believe and uh, they practice together so uh, can't really ask for better preparation than that and these have been taken out really nicely by Jake so far one more decent positional shot here a little stun or drag and uh, that's perfect so a really nice finish there from Jake if you can just take out the last yellow and black Psychologically for Carl, he'll be thinking about the in-off most probably during all of this. And um, the next time he comes to the table, he could be 2-0 down. So it just shows you the importance of trying to keep the white on the table if you can on the break. We all we all do it. We all go in-off occasionally. But um, at this level, it really is small margins which make the difference. So let's see if uh, Jake can deliver the cue nicely, hit the front ball on square, lots of bottom. He didn't connect with them flush, however, he had so much power on that uh, break. And uh, the whites kept on the table and uh, He's managed to get a ball, so he's just going to work out which of the best group to go, yellow or reds, and he's choosing for reds because he can play a cannon first shot to develop the awkward red, which he's done there, so that's a great shot. And just uh, attacking the awkward area first. It's always a good, uh, anyone that's looking to improve their game, watching these good players, you'll notice that they... Uh, tend to always try and uh, attack their problem area first or as early as they possibly can in a clearance because the later you leave it, the harder it becomes. So that was nicely done there from Jake. Probably play this red with screw so he can come off the cushion back into the middle of the table. Leaving himself a choice of two reds, which he's done there nicely. He's already planned the route uh, in his mind, which of the reds he wants to leave last for the black. It's another good thing to try and visualize is which is the easiest red to get onto my final, uh, to get onto the black finish the clearance he had to play a cannon there which he's done again really well so uh, red into the left hand bottom pocket and then that will be followed by the red to the right hand bottom pocket you would imagine The last thing he wants to do is leave himself straight on the red on the bulk cushion, so he wants to leave an angle. In fact, he's changing the route slightly, which isn't a bad option. He's going to screw this in and try and come back to the middle of the table. Again, he's uh, he's managed that nicely. 
We didn't play the cannon, of course, but uh, we'll settle for that. So this is just a case of just screwing this red in, drawing the white back. And this should be 2-0. So, as we said earlier, just one error at this level from Carl Morris, and he finds himself two frames nil to nil down. Good stuff from Jake. all our sponsors as usual here as you can see it's great to have their support we thank you for that incidentally for any of the uh, for anyone that was expecting to hear the dulcet tones of Nick Finn this morning um, I think he may have had a run-in with the law last night which has uh, unfortunately for forced him not to be here this morning we're hoping he should be out anytime soon and uh, yeah, if he's not in handcuffs, he will be back in the commentary box shortly. So hold on, stay with us. So again, unfortunately for Carl, a dry break. And he's uh, handed the table over to Jake. Certainly not an easy run out here. Both sets have uh, their problem areas. Incidentally, Nick, if you are if you are around, I just want to say good morning to you and uh, the fantastic job you always do. So it'd be great to have you back as soon as you get out. Also, just want to say a nice uh, good morning to Michael Day, lovely guy, and uh, one of Plymouth's finest. Does a lot of work for the pool. Arena. Hope you're well, mate. We've also got um, a couple of the Plymouth boys playing uh, this morning, Jez Graham and Jamie Graham. So uh, a couple of really good players from the Plymouth area battling it out in this round four. Jake again is... Uh, Pick the perfect route, it looks like, on these yellows. He really does look to be in very good form. Rock steady. Doesn't look like missing. And uh, taking care of every, every shot he's playing. She can't ask for more than that. sure what the odds were at the start of this uh, event but um, Jake is going to take some stopping in this form that's for sure so he's just lining up with the white where he wants to leave the last yellow by the two reds 
He wants to make sure that he lands on the right hand side of the table as we look at it so that he's got an angle to draw down. He doesn't want to land straight or past the center line or the blue spot as it were. So just lining that up to make make sure that doesn't happen. And then he gives himself a relatively easy shot to finish the clearance. And there we go, look, he's aired on the side of caution. If anything, he's probably got a little bit too much angle, but he shouldn't have any problem in just uh, drawing this back anywhere around the center pocket on the left-hand side as we look at it here. Anywhere on that cushion, he should be absolutely fine. So a soft screw. And that's nicely done. And in the blink of an eye, again, for a all Carl Morris has done is broken, gone in off, and then broke again. He finds himself 3-0 down, so he'll be quite frustrated with the way things are going. But not a lot he can do. Just has to hope that the match turns. Hope that something goes wrong with Jake's break next. Now you can see Carl looking uh, less than pleased and uh, Matt Champ in the background as well from uh, Exeter he's probably watching the stream pretty sure it's 3-0 so uh, Jake needs to update his score we've had a bit of that um, during this tournament. Ah, he's done it now, so that's good. So 3-0 to Jake McCartney in his break. Jake winding up. And another absolute crunching break from Jake. You can see that he clearly focuses on getting that white ball to the side cushion to eliminate or to help with... Uh, not being kicked in off as best he can. Yellow certainly looked the better ball to be playing and I think that's what he's going to go for. One good shot here and a Again, it should be a fairly comfortable run out for Jake. So that's the first ball that we've seen miss from Jake. And uh, it wasn't an easy first shot, of course. But the fact that he would have nominated yellows means that Carl is forced to play the reds, which are less than easy. Far from easy, I should say. Let's see what Carl can do. Carl, of course, former world champion. Wiley Old Fox. And uh, he's elected to take a bit of control of the frame. If I was Jake, I'd be looking to kick this yellow out. As early as I possibly could. Because the clearance, clearance isn't easy for Carl as it is, so he might as well just get rid of this yellow immediately. Which he's done, although... Oh, he's not, he won't be happy with that. You can see Carl's less than pleased because he's uh, fortunately been left in a very awkward position.
There you can see the overview of the uh, the room. The players in the outside tables all battling it out to try and get into the last 16. Not a bad idea for uh, Carl Morris to try and slow down this match a little bit if he can. I see Jake's taking a good early early lead. Carl will need to use all his experience if he's going to get through this match. Uh, good morning to Shane Tregale from Exeter. Hope you're well, mate. So Carl's played a good shot there. He's developed his reds into better position, which is all you can ask for. If Jake is going to go for this clearance, then... Uh, Just elected to play a containing shot. Probably isn't a bad, bad thing to do, really, considering the layout of his yellows. Can't needs to look for an area of the table where he's pointing his his cue here, tip of the cue, to again try and make it as awkward as he possibly can for Jake until he gets a better opportunity. So that's what he's looking at there. Skim off one of these reds. Leave the white in the bottom right hand side of the table. I think he may have left Carl uh, left Jake, possible pot into the left hand bottom pocket. But again, these aren't easy if uh, Jake goes for it. Though it comes a point where he possibly is forced into that. Looks to be a really good shot there from Jake. The only thing you'll be a little bit disappointed with is the fact that the yellow he played has uh, drifted back and isn't potable, I don't think, to the left-hand bottom pocket. Because otherwise he would have been on for a clearance now.
So, I think what we're going to see now is uh, Jake go for these. And uh, he's left himself a reasonable angle on the yellow centre of the table. You can stun this in and come off the cushion and try and develop the awkward yellow if possible. If you can hit the yellow half ball and uh, knock it onto the red, he may be left on it. Oh, he just missed it. It's unlucky. Always going to be a tough shot. Jake is a bit, uh, I don't think he knows quite what to do here. Bit of an awkward spot for him, but um, so He's elected to uh, put the black in an awkward position, and I tell you what, that's an absolutely fantastic shot, especially because he's got the black so tight into in, into the bottom into the bottom cushion. Got to let you know, everybody, we've had some amazing news. I've just seen Nick Finn walk into the building, fresh from his stint in the cells. This is fantastic. Obviously, yeah, uh, that was all a joke, but uh, no, Nick's uh, joining us shortly, so uh, it'd be great to have a professional back in the seat with me. And uh, we look forward to welcoming him back. He's tr probably just going to get a cup of coffee, I would imagine, and get me one as well. And then uh, we'll be good to go. So, Carl, uh, as I said, he's in an awkward spot. Jake played a phenomenally good shot. He got the black really tight. And the key for, for Jake playing the shot he did was to ensure that it was as difficult as possible for Carl with two shots to be able to develop the black. So Carl's objective now will be to get reds down to that area and uh, possibly even pot the yellow, pot Jake's yellow and make it really awkward for, for Jake. That's the really what his objective will be. If I were Jake, I'd be trying to get my awkward yellow out as quickly as I possibly could and um, put Carl under even more pressure because the longer Jake has, the longer the yellow is awkward, uh, the more time that gives Carl to hatch a plan for his reds. 
And that is the thing with world rules. Uh, when uh, when the frames get tactical, it really is a case of uh, cat and mouse who gets who gets an advantage. And so um, I'm not sure how familiar Jake is with the rules. I'm, I'm pretty sure he would be um, with all his years of experience. So he'll be conscious that he needs to get this yellow out as quickly as he can. And here we go. Look, he's attacking it straight away off the cushion with side. Yeah, he's done a he's done a very good job there. And now he's asking Carl the question. Really good shot from Jake. So the only thing in uh, Carl's mind now will be to potentially pot, pot a red, leave himself, um, leave himself the opportunity to knock one of his reds down by the black and yellow, and uh, hopefully pot the yellow, but also leave it fairly difficult or as difficult as he can for Jake to clear up, but um, certainly easier said than done. I can give you uh, anyone that hasn't got Q score or that doesn't know how to um, check on the live scores. I'll give you a quick update now for the outside tables. We've got Zach Shepard who is currently 2-1 up against Sean Chipperfield. Obviously Carl and Jake 3-0 to Carl which we're watching, 3-0 to Jake sorry, which we're watching at the moment. Craig Moneymaking Lakin is 2-1 up against Pat Ward. And Luke Gilbert, um, a young chap, is 5-1 up against John Chapman. Uh, Jack Whelan the double event winner from last time on a crest of a wave at the moment, it seems, is 4-1 up against Andy Barker. The Irish contingent, Steve Dempsey, is 3-2 up against Glenn Whitmore. And Harji Singh, who had a fantastic win against Gareth Hibbert in the first round, you may remember, is 3-2 up against Dan Eaton-Lees. Sean Storey, who seems to have uh, reco recovered some form and is playing really well at the moment is 5-0 up against Jonathan Coleman. Jez Graham from Plymouth, 3-1 up against Neil Davey. And Arfan Dad is 2-0 up currently against Jamie Graham. And uh, Adam Basu, who uh, defeated Declan Brennan last night, late last night, 7-5, is 2-1 down to Christian Disney. Ben Flack from Bristol, 3-1 up against Carl Hoff. Nathan Ellis trails 5-2 to... Top Cat, Tom Cousins. And uh, Christopher Melling is 3-1 up against John McAllister. Aaron Davies 2-1 up against Chris Day. And finally, Neil Raybone 4-2 up against Rich Gifford. Uh, feel free to check out the scores on qscore.com. Type in World Rules Pool and you can find all of the updates. any questions anyone's got if you're watching at home or you want to tell us about your day and what you're doing always uh, always interested to see what everyone else is doing on their Saturday morning 
Pleasure to have you joining with us and watching the pool. Let us know what you're up to. Just to let you know, Carl Morris hasn't got a problem with his finger. He's just uh, pointing to see where he wants to leave his next shot. Paul Child has asked, what's the route to play on the tour? Um, I think um, the best thing to do, Paul, if you're interested in playing on the tour or you know anyone that wants to play, is to get in contact with a guy called Neil Toms, who uh, runs the tour, and um, you can find him on Facebook. Um, and, uh, yeah, send him a message, let him know you're interested, and uh, he'll sort you out, mate. I'm not sure. I think that was a foul, but um, we're just going to check. We're just going to check on the recording to see if that was uh, if that was a foul or not. I must admit, it did look like a foul. So we're just going to check just a moment to see if we can get a replay of that. Just uh, hang on, everybody. So we had the replay there, and um, the official adjudicator has said that it touched, so we're carrying on. Um, I'm impartial. I don't didn't quite see, but uh, that's what they're there for. So uh, Jake's happy, Carl's happy, and uh, we carry on. Carl has done uh, a good job in uh, slowing the frame down as best he can, making it as awkward as he possibly could for Jake, which is all he could do. I think the shot I'd be looking at is if Jake can pot the yellow in the top right-hand pocket and leave himself on the yellow that's in the middle of the table and leave himself straight, he can then stun the yellow into the gap, knocking the yellow in and hopefully leaving a possible pot and opening the red and black. I think that's what he played, but unfortunately he's, uh, he's hit the yellow too thin and he's landed, uh, landed uh, not so good. So he's just coming around to see if he can get as close as he can to the cushion after potting this next yellow.
So a big frame for both players here. Yes, uh, methodical is uh, is correct. There's many descriptors that we could use. shot there from Carl. He's going to hold his two shots for as long as he can at the objective of He's going to do really well to develop these uh, two reds and black. Oh no, he's, you just hear, heard him groan because he, uh, he's gone way too far. Back up the table. I haven't watched many of the matches on this stream table this weekend. Obviously, been playing and everything else, but um, I haven't heard of too many frames like this where uh, players have been drawn into a long tactical battle. Um, everyone on the tour breaks so well these days that um, a lot of that tends to get eradicated. So, hopefully, this will be a one off. And we'll be back to free flowing pool. The next frame. So Carl was itching for that white to travel. Wanted it a bit further, I think. Just uh, letting Jake know that it's not frozen. Uh, last stretch of this frame hopefully as a few of you have alluded to Carl's second second visit now he's just going to try and get as close as he possibly can to the yellow to make it as awkward as he can for Jake who obviously will be looking to pot the yellow and smash into the red and black and give himself a shot so Carl has to be very careful.
So I think uh, Carl Morris may have played a really good shot there. He's, he's tried his best to leave it touching the black. We can see from the overhead if he has, that's a really good shot. Maybe he hasn't, so Jake, two shots now. He's going to try his best to open it up, open the safe, and... Uh, We were saying earlier with Carl, he's um, got so much experience. He's, even though it's not it's not pretty to watch for viewers at home, he's done a great job in uh, prolonging this frame and uh, keeping himself in it, battling hard, which is all you can really do. So we have to give him credit for that. And there you see Jake uh, tapping the table. He knows it's a good shot because. If it wasn't touching the black, he would be able to fire into it and get the balls out if possible, knowing he has a second visit. But um, in this case, he may just have to play away. I'm not even sure if he can, if he can do that. So we'll see. The way he's playing this, it looks like it isn't touching, but Let's see. So clearly it wasn't touching, but um, unfortunately, Jake's gone in off. So after a very, very tough, hard frame. It looks like Carl Morris's determination is going to reward him. And, uh, it will be Carl's break next as well, so all of this hard work. If he breaks a if he breaks well in the next rack, could be back to three two.
Right, welcome back everybody. Just had a slight uh, break there. But we're back, so... Uh, hopefully Carl's updated the score. Or Jake, because it's now 3-1. So Carl's uh, elected to go for yellows and uh, immediately plays a containing shot.
So as we can see, uh, Carl Morris is digging in. So um, try his hardest to uh, get back into this match. Well, whilst we're uh, watching this frame, I'm pleased to say that I'm joined with the best in the business, Nick Finn. <laughs> We've all been uh, having a bit of a laugh about my comment earlier, which, of course, as I said, was just a joke. Um, but, uh, yeah, great to be uh, joined with Nick. It wasn't a pleasant night, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it was 
They do things to you in those <laughs> cells. <laughs> they do, apparently. Yeah, they do, mate. It's, it's not a good place to be. No, we were just uh, commentating on, I was just commentating on this match, and Jake quickly went 3 0 up. The, the frames were open, and then all of a sudden, Carl Morris, as we know he can, yeah. dug his heels in 40 well, minutes frame later. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I, um, I obviously came down here and, and said good morning around about 9.15. Yeah. And, um, and I noticed that it was, it was 3 0. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is a good game. <laughs> I'll go and grab some breakfast. And I got talking over breakfast to, um, to Zach. And um, 40 minutes later, it came back down, and it's, it's gone from 3-0 to 3-1. Yeah. What a match. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't do much for the time schedule, does oh, it? Wow. Did, I was just saying, because I haven't watched many of the matches, obviously b- with the playing and everything else, has there been um, has the schedule run pretty pretty good? I mean, have we had many matches where it's been bogged down with? Yeah, yeah we have. A, a lot of tactical frames. Funnily enough, at the, at the outset yesterday, I did, a, I did a stint yesterday morning um, with... Sean Chipperfield and, and Sean said um, that he felt the table was going to play slower. He felt that um, it wasn't going to play as big as it did in the first couple of ev- events because obviously the cloth is a, a little bit older. Yeah. Um, and sure enough, um, people were missing the ball down the rail. It sits over the pocket, and then as soon in, and that's the one of the biggest issues in this rule set for me. As soon as you cover a pocket, even if it's accidentally, then it's like flies round. Dog, yeah, dog poo, isn't it? Yeah, like there's balls. You know, the balls just gravitate around around that that ball over the pocket. The ball, yeah, they start uh, feeding uh, off uh, it. As you as you can see on the on the left hand side there, it's um, um, as soon as there's a ball there, like you you fire everything else down there just to like uh, you know try and quit, just, yeah, it's absolutely. just automatic in the, in this rule set. Yeah. Whereas um, you know people um, talk about the international rules, but that that you just you, it can't happen. No, exactly. Because you can't use that to, to your advantage. I mean, there was a point yesterday where Jack, Jack Wheeler missed a pot down the rail. Um, it, it, it stayed over the pocket and just gave him a massive advantage. And for me, you should never get an advantage from missing a ball. Yeah. You should be punished. I heard, actually, that I heard that. I was watching that match. Yeah. And you're right, yeah. And, and you're right about the table as well. I think that um, from obviously having a table, having this cloth, I can vouch for the fact that after a few months or a few you know, lots of games. Yeah. It does get it does get slower, and it does certainly tight, tighten up. So, Some updates. We've got Jack Whelan, who's already through now to the last 16. He's just won 7-1 against Andy Barker. So Jack continuing to uh, ride the crest of his wave. Luke Gilbert, young Luke Gilbert, he's uh, he's also through 7-3 against John Chapman. That's a good win. And um, Sean Storey, who is playing absolutely phenomenally well. I know you had a practice session with him, and uh, he opened you up like a can of worms, Nick, didn't he? <laughs> um, he's just uh, he's just beat Jonathan Coleman seven nil. Uh, Andy Barker had a good win last night, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he did. Beat, beat Carl um, Carl Sutton. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so seven uh, so one. He's just been yeah. beat. So Jack, I mean, Jack, Jack just continues to to go off if he on finds them. his break it's uh, trouble for people well, he's going to be outright favourite as well now because obviously Declan Brennan got beat last night so yep. um, Declan um, Jack Declan was 4-1 <coughs> up against Adam Basu yeah. and, uh, and lost yeah. 7-5 the, the whole day yesterday I spent looking at the, the um, every time I walked past the bookmaker I'd see Adam Basu was 66-1 to one, and then he was 50-1 to one, and even before he played Declan he was 40-1 to one. I thought how can this guy be 40-1 to one? he's absolutely on fire and uh, at no point did I put my hand in my pocket and put a bet on <laughs> it, and now I'm regretting it because they probably slashed his odds now. But. Well, one of the one <clears> of the <throat> slight, I, I guess you could call it a slight shock, but the, everyone's at such a good standard now. Is um, Zach Shepard? He's leading Sean Chipperfield six four. Oh, that's definitely a shock. Yeah, you wouldn't have seen that, would you? I, no. I wouldn't have uh, envisaged that. Well, no, so. Chip, Chippy's been Chippy's been on fire, but yeah. The, the thing I was saying yesterday, the the one thing about Sean Chipperfield is is 
if you're ever going to criticise a guy, it's probably his consistency. Because one day he's absolutely on fire and the following day he just turns up and I'm not saying, you know, I mean, it could be that Zach's on fire or, or ch chippy. The thing is, in a race of seven, it could just be a tiny thing like a couple of dry breaks, couldn't it? Yeah. And Zach's obviously playing well against him as well. Yeah. But, and, uh, um, you know, without seeing the game, it's, it's difficult to say whether it is inconsistency, but... Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I, I put it down to his style of play. Yeah, I have to because he's, he's he reminds me a little bit of Craig Lakin. Yeah. They're he's amazing, amazing to watch on the eye. Yeah, but he'll openly admit, and I think he has reined in his game. He said I was talking to him at one of the last events. He said he's reined in some of the shots he plays a little bit, and he tries to take a bit more time. Yeah. when he's on fire, he's unplayable. But um, because of the way he plays, I think if he is slightly off, then as you say, he can get can occasionally get caught out. So. He's pulled another frame back. It's now six frames to five. Yeah. Um, he's actually on table three, which is just out to the left-hand side of us. So we'll, we'll try and keep a, a half an eye on what's happening on that one because it's obviously drawing to a conclusion. Um, yeah, Jake, um, Craig Lakin, you just mentioned, he's 5-3 up against Pat Ward. Um, Stevie Dempsey he continues on. He's 6-3 up against Glenn Whitmore. Harjeet Singh, uh, we watched him on stream yesterday. Harjeet, he... he told me before the match he said mate he says if I win I'm not going to do an interview he said that's not me I, I can't do that I, I, I can't he said I hate stuff like that <laughs> and um, and afterwards I said come on come on he said no I can't he said if I win the event I'll, I'll do an interview I said I'm going to hold <laughs> you to that so I'm, I'm watching he's still winning. I'm watching with interest yeah he's, he's still winning so one of the uh, giants of the game Neil Raybone who has been it's probably fair to say struggling um, the last few tournaments. He's not he's not been doing that great, and uh, so he's had a nice win this morning. So he's into the to the last sixteen. That's good to see. Oh nice, wow! Nice look at that as well. Um, we talked about Adam Basu being on fire. Christian Disney's beaten him seven frames yeah, to two. Yeah, I know. That's that. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't I, know Christian Disney. Is he? Yeah, he's <laughs> he's been a um, he's been a solid performer actually. Um, over the last couple of events, he seems to ha have had some fairly deep runs. Mm -hmm. um, he played um, he played Scott Pope in the second round. I mean, we know that. Um, well, actually, sorry, he beat Chris Hampson. Uh, Chris Hampson was favourite last night, and a lot of people um, put Chris into their bet. But um, but Christian Christian won that. Um, he played Scott Pope in the round before in the second round, and Scott's been on fire recently. Obviously, made a, a, a semi final last weekend and. He really has been playing well, and uh, yeah, Christian beat him in the round before seven four. So he's yeah, he's a he's, he's found some form. Well, it, I mean, if he's beating Adam Basu, you know that he, he's definitely playing well because Adam's just he's been a, an absolute beast lately. Yeah, I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't have that li that little bl flutter on yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. He's done well, now. Yeah. <laughs> John McAllister, Chris Melling, what a game that is! They're locked up at four frames each. Yeah, it was four two to Chris. I'm not sure if it was four one as well. So John's fought back well. And Chris Day, another player that's um, that's on it at the moment. Well, he's playing Aaron Davis. Aaron Davis beat Shane Thompson last night. Uh, I mean, we keep talking about form players. There's so many around at the moment. Shane's obviously one of them. Um, but Aaron swept him aside last night, beat him seven frames to three. Did he? Did you see that match? Yeah, I watched it, yeah. What yeah. Was, what, what, uh, how did it go? I mean, uh, Aaron was just good. I yeah. mean, he was just, he was, he was just on his game, um, as he can be. Um, and... To, to be honest, Shane came away from um, from the game, and uh, I mean, he was, he's shaking his head and he's disappointed. I said, "Mate, you must be gutted. You've only won fourteen grand this week." I mean, you know, yeah, trophies I, in uh, both pockets. <laughs> I can imagine he must be he must be absolutely mortified. And he's come away going, "I can't play these rules anymore." He said, <sighs> I, I, "He said I'm going to have to give them up." He said, "I can't play him." He said, "I don't even know." What, I don't even understand the tactics of I, it anymore. I can I tell you one thing. He wouldn't have said that if he'd have won. <laughs> no, hey, come not. on. We know Shana. <laughs> Good old player. Uh, Legend. No, I'm absolutely so pleased for Shane. Obviously, he works hard. Really hard. Yeah. And, um, yeah, credit to him. So, he'll be back, I'm sure. And Tom Cousins still in the field, still there. He beat Nathan Ellis this morning. He's in, he's yeah, in the top, last 16 there. Top cat. Is in, uh, what a beast of a player, though. I mean, crikey, if he finds his form, people are oh, in trouble. He's just a monster. Uh, he, was, he was telling us yesterday how he's, not, he's got no consistency. He's got no form. And it's like, mate, you, just, you, made, a, uh, you made a semi-final down in London. I was gonna... and, and here you are in the last 16 again. I mean, you're not, 
You're not but fooling anybody. The thing is, by his standards, I guess that it has been a bit of a barren spell. He's not he's not had a title for a while. In fact, it, I, I was I was really impressed yesterday. It was one of the first times um, after his match that I got him into an interview room, and he was actually really candid, and it was really refreshing because he's so he's so um, he's quite a shy. Uh, character and he doesn't really. He doesn't like, like the, the interviews either. Really, he, does he, he, came, he came out of himself yesterday, yeah. and um, and I, I said to him, like, you know, it's been a bit of a barren spell for you, um, you know. And what did you, you ask him what he puts it down to? Yeah, I did, uh, and he said, to be brutally honest with you, mate, he said I'm overweight. He said I'm overweight. I need. To, I, he said I'm getting down the gym next week. He said I need to lose some weight desperately. He said I know if I was a few stone lighter, then um, he said I'd, I'd be. I'd be much better than I am. Yeah. And he said, I'm, I'm bigger than I have been for a, a long time. And he says, I know I've got to do something about it. He said, I'm, I'm the only one in there sweating my tits off and I just, I need to do something about it. And it, it was, it was really refreshing to see him absolutely just open up and he was, he was totally candid about it. Yeah. Well, for him, it must be difficult because he knows how good he is and he yeah. knows what he can do. Yeah. And he's not doing it at the moment or he, or he hasn't been, you yeah. know, so. Yeah. So, I mean, Carl really is. Uh, the thing is, with the, these two players, they're, Jake comes from, um, from from a world rules background, always has done. Um, Carl is a master tactician, so um, seeing these tactical frames is not a surprise at all. Carl will literally do anything he can. He's a, I, I love him, actually, because he is a proper grafter. Yeah. As much as nobody wants to see 40, 45-minute frames, um, no, for, it, the, it, for, for it's, the connoisseur, yeah, it's, um, it, it's quite refreshing in some ways to see somebody who just just won't give up. They fight for every ball. Well, it was funny because he won <clears> that <throat> forty-minute frame, and he came into the office here, and he said, "I, I told you." I, I, I mean, he, <laughs> he loved it. Yeah, he, he, he loved it. it. He said, "That I fight, I determine." You know, <laughs> not in that language, but yeah, he was he has was he, over the moon. Has he gone Polish? Yeah, I was going to say sorry. I just <laughs> <laughs> he's t- he's t- <laughs> Carl Morris has turned <laughs> Polish. It's amazing. <laughs> no, but I didn't. I got that slightly wrong, but you know what I mean. He, he was I, I do think. Uh, it's fantastic. No, it's just the way he came bowling through. I did it. And, and, you know, it's really, really happy. And fair yeah. play to him. You can only commend that sort of determination, that fighting quality. So, um, yeah. The, pole, the Poles have it, though, don't they? In spades. What? <laughs> they really do. <laughs> <laughs> the Polish, they just... They fight for everything, mate. It's part of their nature. <laughs> oh yeah, I got the accent wrong. I didn't mean like that. But uh, anyway, it was a valiant effort, though. It was. It's got to be said. It was. I mean, I've got a full admiration for anyone it that can stay there fighting for forty minutes because I couldn't do it. <laughs> but no. Yeah, he, take, he he prides himself in, uh, in in that kind of thing. He absolutely loves it. So we see the Jakey and um, yeah, another. I mean, Jake's got so much firepower, um, and and he, he he won that event recently just through his firepower. His, his cue ball probably wasn't as precise as somebody like a a, a Phil Harrison or or um, you know someone who who keeps a cue ball on a string. He plays more to areas rather than that getting that absolute precision, and he relies on his firepower when he gets in into a little bit of trouble to to, to get out of it. Well, you, yeah, you say that. I was watching him play last night against Lee Howitt, who's a very good player from um, Clint's area. Yeah, and um, some of the shots he was playing last night, he was like top eight player. You know, re- it was just brilliant. So um, yeah, he's 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 in a good vein of form. He practices a lot of the players. Paul Lounge, I know he practices a lot with Declan, but prior to events. Mm. And um, all the work's paying off. I think, yeah, I think this this move um, over to the UK is is going to transform his game. Yeah, it's going to transform the player that he, he is. I think it's already showing. Um, I think the Australians already knew what he's capable of, but this is this is taking him on to the next level. Yeah, and he's a nice, bloody nice guy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top chore for an Aussie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, guys. I know you. I know you're tuning in, watching him. I've got to get a little dig. Bit in. of banter. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, yeah, still uh, same frame. <laughs> still the same uh, frame. Since, I mean, uh, the thing is, they'd be mo- they, they'd be moaning if this was a snooker frame, let alone yeah. a pool frame. Well, they need the, the thing is, um, what they need to do is put it on the clock. Because, yeah. uh, I mean, it's not just a slow game because of the tactical side of it. It's slow because they're actually taking a long time over the well, shots. You, yeah, you've got a player taking two, three minutes a shot. It's yeah. just, and it prolong, that's, we, you know, that's going to ruin the schedule. I imagine. I mean, at some point, who has a word with top table? How does it work? Oh, we're just about to, so. Oh. <laughs> and I mean, the players can appreciate that. I mean, Craig, we started at nine o'clock. It's now nearly half past ten. They played four frames. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I mean, Carl, he knows, you know, the the absolute key to this is obviously the red and black tied up together. It's It's what's stopping... Jake from making his clearance, and it's what's stopping Carl from uh, from clearing the table. So he's um, just removed one of the other reds off the table, and it is like like you, like you met the, the word you said earlier. It is a frame for the purist. Uh, there, well, it there, is. There, there will be people who are absolutely fuming that this frame's taking so long, but there will be people who absolutely enjoy this because um, in in a time in a time where we watch Crash Bang Wallop. Break dish, break dish, break. I mean, that is exciting. It is fantastic to watch it, and it, and there's nothing that gives me any more pleasure than than watching, you know, a, a race to eleven, and you've got fifteen break dishes in it. I mean, it's fantastic to watch. But sometimes it is good to see another side. It, it, it's like the safety battle in in snooker. You, you get the the hour long frame where you have a fantastic safety battle. You know, you, you'd never hear complaints about that. No, it's true. That is true. But you, you wouldn't want to see it. <laughs> you certainly wouldn't want to see it every frame. No. No, absolutely and, and not. And that's where the ba- where snooker gives you that really good balance because the next frame you'll see a century break and it's, yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, our fan dad is now one against Jamie, 7-2. Ben Flax also doing very well, which is good to see. He's yeah. just, uh, he's beat Carl Hoff, 7-2. <coughs> ben, one of the old school pros. And there we have it. <laughs> wow. That was an epic. That that was two frames that uh well. Um anyway, so um it's an hour you are never gonna get back basically. It is, yeah, but that's hopefully what, uh what happened there. Hopefully that's we've turned the corner now. And uh Jake McCartney to break, four one, big break and dish. Yeah. That's what the game needs. So Chris Melling's just inched ahead of John McAllister, who's um, leading five frames to four. So we'll see how that... Oh! Wow. Mr. Zach Shepard. Did, did he win? No. A little bottom prolapse, I think, and uh, 
No, I don't. I don't know. I obviously didn't see the game, but um, but Chippy's won that one. Oh, fair play. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but, no, I, but, <laughs> I always tease Zach, to be fair, but uh, he's good for it. So a good break there from, from Jake. And uh, I would imagine he'd be looking at yellows here, looking at the layout. He needs to get rid of that. Um, he needs to just negotiate the, the route, really. I mean, basically, all I'm going to say now, mate, is if he covers a pocket... I'm I'm off to the bar, so <laughs> you're on your own. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> One of the viewers just <laughs> typed in and said, uh, 40 minute frame must turn you Polish. But I, that was just because of my accidental um, <laughs> accent that I got wrong. <laughs> but uh, Haji against Danny and Lise. That's now six frames each. Danny and Lise always reminds me of King Edward. Well, yeah, he's just won actually seven six. Oh, is he? Yeah, what, just updated now. So, oh, wow. so no interview for Harji. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointing. Steve Dem is doing well. Speaking to him yesterday, and um, he just uh, he was having some tip problems, and there's a there's actually a, a tip shop literally just across the road. Oh, is it? Yeah, so he was in there with Jamie Crame, and they were chewing the ear off the bloke in the shop he didn't know what day it was he hadn't had a customer for three years so, so, so they walked in and all of a sudden he's doing about 10 tips in one day but uh that was funny so good good luck to steve so there's a well. there's a there's a shop in yeah, blackpool yeah literally it deals in snooker only cues. shop that's Some open tips. in blackpool and um <clears throat> i was looking from our hotel window and there's a row of shops yeah. most of them closed whatever but there's this one little shop called the Snooker and Pool Company. And there's this little old guy who's like looking out the window like a lost soul. Hasn't, literally hasn't been open for, for, for decades, it looked like. And all of a sudden, Jamie Graham and Steve Dempsey bowl through. I need a new tip. I need a new feral. I need this sand to die. Hurry up, you know. And mate, he's like, oh, God. Oh, my God. I've got to get Did the he bank to, like, He's literally had to blow the dust off of his Yeah. Well, he had, one of the, he had one of those tills that you have to ring the thing to, isn't it? <laughs> So uh, he was like, it was a Christmas for him. Brilliant. Yeah, he rang through £9.95 through the till. He was over the moon. He's going to have to pay tax this year then. Yeah. Goodness me. Yeah, fair play to him. Chris Day is doing very well at the moment. 5-4 up against Aaron Davis. He's been running. His diets. He's got his diet right. All yes. sorts going yeah, on with Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair play to him. I know he's, he's on a fitness drive. And he, he's probably getting that influence from Sean Story. Sean Story is one of those players that a lot, a lot of players are like, oh, I've got a nine o'clock game. Oh, my God. I think Sean absolutely loves it. Yeah. He'll have been up at six o'clock this morning, gone out for a run, doing his, doing, doing his normal routine, and then uh, and then just turns up to the table and blasts someone off the table. And whoever he's playing is probably woke up with a bit of a hangover, fuzzy head, had a few beers Bare, last barely night. Barely see. Yeah, can barely see the balls. And, and, and Sean's just, yeah, just turns up. Yeah, because I'm sure Sean was going through a crisis of confidence recently, but all of a sudden he's found something again and yeah. he's flying. Yeah. And as I said, I mean, I, I don't know where he got that confidence from. Maybe it was playing you the other day. I think it's <laughs> absolutely <laughs> what it was. <laughs> but this is more like it from Jake. Nice quick fire frame. Carl will will be feeling terrible because he's been he's literally been through a war. Yeah. And he's still. He's he's five five one down now, yeah. so so breaking this one's going to be Karl Moriski, the Polish version. Jez and um, Neil Davy seem to have been locked at four two for the last half an hour as well. So that's uh, another slow goer. <coughs> Lakin and Pat Ward, five each. So um, let's have a look and see how that last 16 shaping up because it is starting to, to, to fill. So Sean Chipperfield, he's waiting the winner of, um, of this game. So it's going to be Sean. Well, it looks like Jake at the moment, but who knows? Yeah. That'll be a, a, another cracker of a game. Yes, um, it will be. Luke Gilbert's waiting there, and he's waiting for the winner of Lakin against Pat Ward. Yeah. Stevie Dempsey's going to be playing Jack Whelan. Um, 
Oh. Oh, Haji won. He won, yeah. Oh, I thought uh, when, because I was talking about Danny and Lisa. And yeah, I wondered that. I thought when you said about the in- Yeah, he oh, won, so the oh. interview's still on. Oh, it is still on. Fantastic. It Love it. So Haji's going to be playing Sean Story, so he's got a, he's got a big one there. Um, Arfan Dad, who's another player who's on a rich vein of form, form at the moment, he's waiting for the winner of um, Jez Graham against Neil Davey. Jez yeah. currently 4 2 up, as you mentioned. Um, ben Flack's going to be playing Christian Disney. Uh, Scott Cousins, oh, what a game that's going to be. Scott Cousins is going to play the winner of John McAllister, Chris Melling. Well, that one's a, yeah, that's a, a, a seesaw battle at the moment because Chris <coughs> Melling was 5 4 up. Now John McAllister's taking the lead at 6 5. Yeah. And um, and then uh, Neil Raybone awaits the winner of Chris Day and Aaron Davis. So, wow. I mean, there's like a who's who of pool in that last 16. It really is. So um, Jake McCartney's just going to probably play a little cannon now. Yeah, nicely done. Which is uh, shortly becoming 6-1. And um, he's racked off these last couple of frames within the blink of an eye, thank goodness. Yes, indeed. I, I hear the ladies being called to the, um, to the table for the ladies' event. I did notice with the bookmaker earlier... Um, um, I don't think uh, Amy Beauchamp is here this weekend. Mm-hmm. So um, I noticed that it goes Harriet Haynes 5-4, to four, Emma Cumming- Cunningham 7-4, to 66-1 to one the field. <laughs> Basically. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. There might have been somebody in there in between at 16-1 to one or something, but it, it goes 5-4, to 7-4, to 16-1, to 66-1 the field. Wow. I mean, it, it just shows... And would Amy have been... One of the other favourites, presumably. Yeah, Amy, Amy makes... So the last two finals have been Harry against Amy. Ah, OK. So <coughs> there would have been three short price... <coughs> excuse me. Three short pri- price players. And there we can see... Craig Lakin has just taken a one-frame lead against Pat Ward, 6-5. And John McAllister six five up on Chris Melling. Can we see? Uh, can we see what's happening on table two? Do we know if Chris Melling's at the table or whether it's? Um yeah, we'll see if we can get a camera shot on that table. Yeah. Just looking across. Um, yeah, well there you go. John McAllister is six five ahead, and he's at the table on a clearance, and a, it looks he's like he's yellows. on yellows, and there's one yellow tied up. Yeah, and um, oh, well, maybe it goes. To be uh, honest, it yeah. might even go the way he's played that. Yeah. So, yeah, could be about to secure the match. Yes, what a win that would be! Not really a surprise. John's, a, you know, we know how good John is, but yeah. um, yeah, you, you've got to assume that that must go. Yeah. Don't know about the black, though. Yeah, he may have to leave um, an angle so that he can develop the black, but we'll just, soon just, see. Just to keep you updated, cross on the other table, because um, <coughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to do two things at once here, but uh, I can tell you that Jake is on a clearance on the other table as well, so that one looks like it's, yeah, well, this yellow obviously goes. So oh, He's landed perfect, look. That is a great shot from John. I think we'll... Just head back across to the action on the main table just to see the conclusion of this one. We'll keep half an eye on the other one at the same time and just let you know what's going on on that one. But uh, we don't want to we don't want to miss the key action on this table. But looks like a fairly simple clearance for Jake here after after being dragged through the um, dragged through the the blender for a few frames. There he's he's just said no to that. Not having any more of that. Yeah, I'm just going to get on with this now. 
no more nonsense. And uh, he's just pulled the trigger. Yeah, he's, uh, he's done well. And um, he's going to take some stopping, I think, he's this an weekend. He's absolute beast of a player. There's no question. Here we go, John, for the match. This is over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It shakes hands. And that sees the end of Chris Melling. And uh, we're just about to say goodbye to Carl Morris. Because he won't be making any mistakes from here. No, this is a little cannon or a screw back. Yeah, there we go. And he's not going to miss this black, you wouldn't have thought. Maybe would have liked to have been a little bit easier, but to be quite honest, at 6-1 up, there's not much pressure on him. So this yeah. is over, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Very well, nice. it's been a pleasure commentating with you, uh, Nick. We've had a good bit of fun. So thank you for that. Hopefully I can get in again later on. Oh, love to see you in there, and, Nick. Love um, to see you. We'll do some more accents. Yeah, if you're at a loose end, I'll, I want you to come back. I want you to do your... Um, if I get a call from anyone saying, Greg, of what's happened to you, then I'll know what I'll know it's you. <laughs> Mate, I want, I, w I want your best Irish accent when you come back, right? So I'll, I want you working on I'll that I'll get one. practicing. I'm going to my room now uh, to practice. I, w I want you to come back and do your, your Irish Brian Halcrow, all right? I'm on it. Is that all right? Top Brilliant. man. Cheers, boys. Cheers, mate. So we're going to catch a few words with Jake over in the interview room. Uh, we'll see you over there in just a couple of minutes. So joined by Jake after that win. Jake, always going to be a tough match when you're playing Carl Morris. Um, you got off to a great start and then you wanted to take it tactical. I know. <laughs> and at 9 a.m. in the morning, well, I couldn't think. I'm just, uh, mate, I know when I went through nil up, you're right, I did get very tactical and I did struggle. I just, obviously with international rules, I've just played and I was just, I just, don't get me wrong, two shots I've always played, but I really just struggled tactically. I don't even know if I played the right shots. I'd have to go back and have a look because yeah. obviously normally I'd have a few shots, you know, in the armory. But um, look, listen, at the end of the day, I knew it was going to be, you know, a pretty hard, tough match. Nine a.m. this morning against Carl, legend of the game. But you know, I'm just happy that I've just sort of stuck to my guns and managed to get through. You talk about the rules. Funny enough, um, Shane Thompson came away from his match with Aaron Davis yesterday. Now, like Shane's a a, a, an England international who plays at this rule set, and he came away saying, "I can't play the rules anymore." Yeah. I can't. Is it is it really getting to that that stage where it is? Um, it is, and I would have been the first one to say, "No, sure, you can just adapt really quick." But no, I'll be the first one to admit that um, because obviously everyone's always looking, you know, to go again and pot out, you know, develop balls. But <clears throat> excuse me. Obviously, you've got to be a little careful. You can't just pot your opponent's ball. You know, you can't... That aggressive safety with the international rules, uh, you know, obviously with world rules, it takes that out. So you've sort of got to... You know, all of a sudden, instead of potting balls over holes, you're either smothering them or, you know, you can't play the skill shot. Uh, it is. It's not as easy um, just to adapt. 
Yeah. You know, and especially when you're playing all day, every day with the international rules. But after, after those tactical frames, you must have been glad to, to, to get some chances just to be able to let yourself go in those last few frames. Because the thing is with Carl, you know what you're going to get. He's, he fights for every ball. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he played one of the best shots. I was 3 0 up, and I thought I was in a position where I couldn't lose the frame. He's played this one shot, and I just, when he played it, I just went, A, I didn't even think of it. Like, even seen it and it was just a shot that won him the frame ultimately but I just I knew the black couldn't come out I just I didn't even think of that shot you know and he's one of the best um, out of car like he is he, the frame's never over you know until he says it's over and you um, know then it was 3-1 and at 3-2 like he got unlucky I can't remember exactly off the top of my head but he got unlucky you know not to um, like potty gel or something and have two on he just got a pretty bad result you know 3-2 and then obviously things can change yeah. so you know, then 4-1 and then his break sort of dried up as well. You yeah. know, that probably hurt him at the business end. But, yeah, I was just happy to capitalise in the end. Yeah. Um, Sean Chipperfield next. It just gets easy, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Another player that's on form, but, I mean, you are you are as well. So it's a it's a clash of two informed players. Should be a great match. Yeah, mate. As, as I've always said since I've been here, I've just said, listen, if you're going to win these things, you have to beat everyone. And I just try and keep it simple. I know I sound like a broken record probably because I keep saying it. You know, I just take it one ball at a time, one frame at a time, regardless who I play. And you know, Chippy's, um, you know, he's very good. And I think I think your styles are, are quite similar in a way because you, you you both rely on your firepower. I mean, you've got tremendous firepower. You, you, your cue ball is probably not as 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 tight as someone like a Phil Harrison, but yeah. you rely on your fire firepower. You can pop them off the chandeliers. Yeah, I do agree with that. I know my, <laughs> I know firsthand my white balls. You know, isn't as sharp, but I sort of back me potting ability. Yeah. Um, obviously, back home the table's a bit bigger, so, and I'm not saying it's easier to pot on, but I've just you know. It's just something I've always relied on, my potting ability, you know. And I don't recommend it potting your way out of trouble. I'd love to have the white <laughs> ball on a, on a string, but, you know, sometimes it just doesn't happen. And yeah. Do you think that's coming like, from um, the bigger table? It's just you, you play more to areas rather than trying to get that precision? Yeah. You're you playing yeah. on a bigger, a bigger template? Correct. Um, but, obviously, the more I'm playing on these things, and on, the cloth is just so reactive. And I'm, I'm getting better at it yeah. with the white, but yeah, there's still you know, a lot of room for improvement. But yeah, back home, you're right, we do have you know, a bigger area to land in. And um, like I said, you know, we're just back here potting ability. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, on these tables, I, I, if I'm, I'm going to come undone, it's because I've lost the white, you know, just you know, a couple of mil. You just got to be so much better with the white, yeah, I yeah. find, on these tables. So best of luck in the last 16. Um, you're, you're at the business end again. So you, see, you seem to be making a regular habit of it. It's good to see. Yeah, I'm happy just to be sort of yeah, still in yeah, the yeah. Take it one match at a time. We'll see yeah. how we go. Absolutely. So uh, next up on stream is going to be uh, a match at the Jason Owen Open. It's going to be uh, Shane Thompson against Neil Wren. Thanks to Jake. Best of luck to him for the rest of the event. And we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, mate.